Welcome to Tuma Mina Teaching. This is the fourth lesson and in today's lesson we're going to discuss the end of the Second World War in the Pacific Ocean. You will remember that the war did not end all at once. First it ended in the European sphere and then in Japan. What did Europe look like just after the war? Europe was completely destroyed. Germany was in ruins, especially Berlin that was taken over by the Red Army of Russia. Hitler committed suicide and that ends the war in the European sphere. But the question is why did Japan continue with the war? They were allies with Germany. Now there's something about the Japanese culture that we need to understand here. In the Japanese culture it is very dishonorable to give up. You don't surrender. As a soldier you would rather die than surrender. This dates back from the era in Japan where a samurai would rather kill himself before giving himself up to an enemy. Now keeping this in mind, we look at Hirohito's response. Hirohito refused completely to give up. He would not surrender. The Allies' response to him was that Japan would experience immediate and complete destruction if they did not surrender. Unfortunately, they didn't and uh, the Allies pushed and took over two strategic islands under Japanese control, Iwo Jima and Okinawa, with loads of people losing their lives in the process. Unfortunately, they still refused to give up. At this stage, America decided to use their new weapon, the atomic bomb, and on the 6th of August 1945, they dropped their first atomic bomb on Hiroshima. A couple of days after, they dropped the second bomb on Nagasaki. Japan decided to surrender under one condition, that Hirohito would remain as their leader of Japan. Interestingly, between the prominent leaders of the Axis powers, Hirohito was the only leader to survive the Second World War. So Japan then surrendered, and the official document of surrender was signed on the 2nd of September 1945 on the USS Missouri warship. So this marks the end of the Second World War. Let's have a look at the world map at this stage. Remember, as I said previously, it was a world war and I'm only talking about the prominent countries during the Second World War. America was still in a very strong position after the Second World War. England just survived the Second World War. France was one of the first countries to fall during the war and most of Europe was in ruins especially Italy and Germany. Russia suffered massive losses. They lost the most people during the Second World War. But seeing that the country is so large with so many people in it, the country was still relatively strong and standing. And Japan was broken with the atomic bombs that were deployed on them. So in summary, there were only two superpowers that remained standing after the Second World War, America and Russia. And this is where the tension starts building up between the two superpowers. Every now and then I would like to conclude with a little story, interesting story. As you remember, in the Japanese culture, it is dishonorable to surrender. And there were many soldiers that just didn't believe that Japan surrendered. Let me introduce you to Hiro Unada. He was the last person to surrender in the Second World War. He continued fighting for 29 years in the island that he was stationed in. He just completely refused to believe that Japan would surrender. So for today's keyword. Today's keyword is the word superpower. A superpower is a country with a dominant position in the world. The country is able to exert global influence, especially in an economic, military and political Field. This marks the end of the fourth lesson. In the description below is a test. Please complete it to test your own content knowledge.